K.P. Kulski is a Korean-American author and former history professor. Her fiction is often inspired by history, evident in her gothic horror novel, Fairest Flesh, from Strange House Books, and novella, House of Pongsu, from Bizarro Pulp Press. She currently resides with her family in the woods of Northeast Ohio. KP, over to you. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for having me, and thank you to the audience for being here. This has been really a lot of fun already. So, um, I'm going to be reading from House of Pongsu. Um, Pongsu is a uh, it's Korean geomancy. So, um, I like to consider this book my Korean gothic horror novella. So, I I just came up with that phrase. <laughs> so, all right. So, I'm going to start from the beginning. So my soul is wind and water, and the tiger has taught me to run away from the stillness and expectations. With instinctual greed, I grip this freedom. For too long, womanhood has been the carving of the woman, prime slices for the feast of others. I'm so tired of dwindling. I'm so furious at the self-sacrifice. I'm tired of regret. Breathe fire, she tells me. How? I ask, considering the possibilities and desperate glee. She smiles. First step, her hand ushers me forward and she lowers her voice. The first step is the dying. Before I'm aware of anything, she shoves me hard and I fall like a star cast out of a false heaven. I watch the shadow of leaves formed by the setting sun poking through the trees. I think of walls. I think about being contained. Then I reject it all. Before the end, there must be a journey. And this story is my journey. Daughter. It is a palace in the style of Korean Joseon Kings, a great walled collection of elaborate halls and pavilions, <clears throat> cobbled courtyards, and man-made reflecting pools. A stronghold of decisions, regal processions, important officials, except it has none of these things. Only the structures, walls, and three people in total who dwell within. Daughter, mother, grandmother. It is here that I learned who I am, what I want, to reject old values. Some might say it was too late to learn, but really, it was the perfect time and place for such lessons. It begins with menstruation. The blood seeps from the wound of womanhood and I can't remember a time this has happened. To menstruate, to be in a state of change. Not here, things here don't change. A world of immutability, so still that the lake's waters seem frozen into a an eternal mirror a liquid alternate reality where the streaks of orange and yellow from the setting sun contrast with the clouded blue mountains. They seem bigger in the lake's vision, as if the heavens push down instead of soaring. A heavy fall that crashes upon the rooftop of Imjin Pavilion. Or perhaps I am seeing it all wrong. Perhaps instead the crimson painted pillars of the ambulatory hold up not only the roof, but the heavens as well. In my red humbuck, I could be an odd addition to the pillars, another forever silent thing carved from wood, whose only purpose is to be part of the pavilion, and by extension, the palace. I have been and will be 16 forever. I cannot remember a time I've been anything else, or that grandmother and mother had been any other age. I'm well read enough to know that this is strange. There are stories filled with infants and children of marriages. I understand these things like snapshots of someone else's life glimpse, life glimpse through a window. From these stories, I gain sustenance, a stream of knowledge and the fantastic. Funny how the walls are never present in the lake's reflection. How the tops of them always fall below the lake's reflective eye. The lake suggests we pretend that only what it can see be reality. But if that was true, how could, how would anything within the buildings be real? Are our thoughts and hopes real? These questions are quite maddening. 
saw a rip of fluffy peony head and let the shower of white petals fall upon the liquid surface. Let the lake get a close look at the harshness of existence. Let it smell the perfume and taste its beauty and then let it be touched with its brutal end. I can only look with my eyes and see the wall, how thick it sprouts from the dusty ground, towering whitewashed stone. It pretends not to trap us in, looking endless as it runs the length of the large grounds. But I know it turns, runs, and then turns again and again in sharp angles, jutting and trapping us within. Animals within a gilded cage, a cage that hints there may be something more outside. Mountains in the distance and trees swaying and breezes beyond the wall. An excellent artist must have painted them because they seem genuine. Just enough embellishment to make the viewer imagine the cool touch of mist upon its tops, but never feel them for herself. And should I be satisfied existing here? I can almost hear the jailers in my mind. Look at what we've given you. The finest things by the finest creators. Protected, secured, so that we can drain you of all your spirited existence. I step under the shadow of the pavilion. The first floor opens to the air, the creamy jade ceiling supported by a forest of columns. In the center of the open space looms a large, ornate chair. A painted screen beyond, behind it depicts a view of the mountains, the same mountains beyond the wall, illuminated by the sun and moon coexisting on opposite edges. Many times, I have wished to climb those steps and sit in the chair and imagined myself on it. But I always stop chiding myself. That is a seat for great men, not a seat for you. Why shouldn't it be for me? Even as I reach with my girl heart for great things, I have learned to slap my own wrist to stop the dream. Wishing for something that cannot be is a waste of time and energy. That is what mother tells me. It only leads to disappointment. There lives an animal within me that growls when I hear this. A wild thing that wants to bite its tether. Yet, I do nothing to free it. Instead, I stand very still. Say little and wait for the fury to subside. But now I am bleeding as a girl should when coming of age. A womb that has grown to fertility but I can't help worrying that I have stifled the animal for too long and that somehow I managed to kill it. And this blood is the bleeding of the wildness within me being squeezed out of my spirit. I am being hollowed out. I'm going to stop there. Um, so you can enter into uh, also win a, a copy of House of Pongsu. Thank you.